Hello, hello. This is Lexa Hampton with 52 Weeks Live. I am going live today with Carrier and Co, whose handle I posted incorrectly on the guys. Hi. So I saw Harry Styles last night. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Hi. How are you guys? We're good. Nice to see you. Oh, nice to see you. I'm at an install and somebody's going to come in at some point to grab me so I can locate a painting. So that'll it. be fun. We'll figure out how to do that. How are you? We're, we're good. We're live. Um, congratulations on the latest and greatest introductions. Is this, are, are these carpets the first time they're at market? This is this uh, high point will be the first time they're in North Carolina market, but we did launch in Vegas. So well, because I've probably... seen photos, so yes. you know I know that they exist, but they are really beautiful. The one that kind of looks like trees that are three dimensional, um, mm -hmm. and it's also got like a camouflage aspect. Very much love, so. Love, love. I feel like um, I feel like camo is having a moment too. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, how did you guys get started in the business? Oh boy, um, we're going deep. <laughs> oh yeah. You want to know the real story? The real yeah. story is uh, we we met at FIT. We were both in the interior design program at FIT, but in different different classes, different whatever they were called, and. Um, we actually didn't know each other, or we didn't really and, meet each other. And where still. are you both from? Are you New Yorkers? Or are you, where are you from? I'm from Syracuse, New York, so I guess it's kind of a New York, but not really. That's New York. <laughs> <laughs> That's America. And Mara, you? Yeah, I grew up in Westchester County. Okay, so even more New York, <laughs> but not New York. Okay, um, and we were, so you're yeah, both we, at FIT. We're both at FIT. I was interning at the time for Mr. Thomas O'Brien. Uh -huh. And um, for that purpose, I had to change my class schedule to join this other group at FIT that I hadn't really experienced before, which is where I met Merritt in our senior year at FIT. So that's how we met. That's how we got into the industry was really through my internship at Thomas O'Brien and you were interning at Modern Bride. I was interning um, also at Eichen Cleaverman Architects. Aha! Uh -huh. I didn't know that. I love that. Um, so, so when did you start dating? Uh, second semester. Let's let's it. let's go into real personal things. Nineteen ninety-six. <laughs> Six or five. Ninety-six. And did you ever get to work together before going out together? Uh, you know, before before opening a company together. Yeah. No. So but that's like exciting. Was very parallel. Like we were always working on similar kind of projects and similar firms. It was all very um, incestuous, if you will. It was. Well, how come it got? Were you? When did you get married? Uh, today's our anniversary. Nineteen years. Happy ago. anniversary! Yay! Yeah. Um, and when did you open the company? Uh, we gauge that by our son's After age, who is 15, yeah. so yeah, 15. Okay, years. so that's because since Mara goes by Miller, I was like, why is it Carrier and Company? But I guess by then you both were Carriers. You know, I, I honestly thought I would change my name at a certain point, and... I know, I, 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 I hear you. It. You had to earn it. I mean... Um, besides, you know, Mara Miller <laughs> is a great name. You know, I was very into numerology and uh, I don't know. Now I wish maybe I'd shaken up my vibration a little bit, but what's done yeah, is done. I mean, it worked for Barbara Streisand. Didn't she drop an A because it, she was Barbara and she changed it to Barbara because of some numerological something. I feel you, Mara. I feel you. Um, okay, so you're both working at other places. You're married. And at what point are you just like sitting at the breakfast table one day and, and thinking like, this is so dumb? We had this crazy idea, Alexa, that, you know, Mara would be in Montana and I would be in Martha's Vineyard. We were working different firms, different projects, different clients, 
different time zones and boom, we have a baby and we sort of stopped and said, you know, maybe if we're going to make a go of this, we really ought to try to have like a little control over our schedule. Maybe we should take this leap. So How's that working? We had, a, we, we had our first child, we had bought our first apartment and we decided to like quit our jobs and open a business. All terrible ideas we would never recommend to anybody. <laughs> No, that's what everybody says. Like they never would have done it if they'd known what was in store for them. But isn't that kind of a byline of so many major things that we all do? Well, the big joke is we have never had less control over our mm -hmm. schedule than we do now. So yeah, there you go. But it's <laughs> it, it, but it's shared psychologically. You know, you you share that. Do you guys work on every job together? For Generally. the most part, yes. That's really great. Um, what was, when you set up your firm, how'd you go about it? Um, well, uh, at first it was right out of our um, yeah. living I mean, room. <laughs> it was, I have to say this was really cute. Jesse, um, so we, we learned a couple of things. We had like an adorable nursery set up and then you realize that when you have a newborn or a young child, you're always with them. They're never mm -hmm. in the nursery. Right. So we moved the crib into our bedroom and we basically gave Jesse the nursery as an office. And we had like a big secretary that I was working out of. And I would roll I out of bed. I thought you were the big secretary. Oh, <laughs> you're the big secretary. Danger zone. I actually let him be president of the company to make him feel important. I Pablo's, Pablo's tried to be the president of my company. <laughs> but For um, real. And I was I like, uh-uh. I have more shares. I have more shares. Okay, good. So what's it, you know, whatever. What's an ego fun. pet? Yeah, okay. And we, so we were working and I would roll out of bed and like the best part about working for myself, I thought was never showering and rolling. Like I'd roll out of bed. I would just sit down with a cup of coffee, work for like three hours and then take a break, take a shower, eat breakfast. Yeah. But I love to like kind of push out all the work. Segment it. Take a break. And Jesse would get up, get dressed, like take a shower, get dressed, leave, go to a deli, come back Mental. with like a coffee and a bagel, go sit in his little room. Sit in my nursery. In the nursery. <laughs> right. <laughs> do even crazier things like he used to try to talk to me using the intercom on the phone <laughs> when we were literally, you know, so all about professionalism. I'm all about professionalism. No, and I remember thinking like, I think he's having a nervous breakdown. I think this is hard for him. But you know, that's, it's such an interesting part of entrepreneurship is that it's kind of not catch as catch can, but it's, it's what you make it. And you got to kind of find your groove. Yeah. Right? And we, we were lucky that we got a little um, office that we were able to rent in our apartment building. There was an old superintendent's right. office in the, we have a, a pre-war courtyard building that has a little garden and there's one little weird space and it was kind of derelict and empty and we inquired about it and we were able to rent it very inexpensively and that really helped with that switch where it's like now we left the apartment, had somewhere to go, that was work, home didn't have to be, because we're together all the time, so it's like yeah. home didn't have to be work anymore and um, we also immediately got an intern to try to train us on how to work more professionally so it wasn't like people were I love people. that you got an intern to instruct you to train us yes yeah <laughs> you got an internship you mean <laughs> you became somebody's intern um what did what did you need the most training to do well I think um work-life balance that never happened but yeah, I but... think just being uh learning to be professional in the office because this is a whole other kind of relationship mm -hmm. going on. So to be able to sort of leave that in the apartment mm -hmm. and then walk into an office and try to be so boss that, and not mom what does that mean? What does that I mean, mean? Well, yeah. I'm not sure we've mastered it, but I do yeah. feel like we are legitimately mom and pop. Like I think sometimes our staff feels a little more like the kids in the office and it's you know there's a dynamic that and we're getting older there's a dynamic that <laughs> and they're getting younger there's a, pre, there's a pre existing condition if you will right right so uh, i think yes we 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 do struggle to sort of um, break that habit and and just be principals and not parents if that makes right. sense yeah totally <laughs> you're talking to somebody who definitely knows what that's like <laughs> um i you know i got into the habit of calling my parents by their first name 
because I couldn't be walking around the office all day being like, mommy, daddy. Yeah. And now for my, for my sins, my children call me by my first name frequently, which everyone else finds bizarre, but I do not. Um, uh, gosh, there's so many, do, do you guys separate? Whole, yeah. The, about this is a whole, like we could have a whole, Oh yeah. We, we could do it another session just on this I'm Windows, the family so. dynamic. Um, so now I'm on my knees. Okay. So do you guys separate what you do? Like who's, is one of you stronger at one thing and the other stronger at another? Yes. I won't answer that question. Okay. Mara, <laughs> tell me. Um, I, I honestly, I do more of the business development stuff. I work with the lawyers, we update our contracts, I review, I do all the, a lot of the dry stuff. I like spreadsheets. Mm, um, I love people who love spreadsheets. I do not personally, but it's a very sexy trait. I, I, I think it turns me on, but yeah. uh, Jesse is, I feel like Jesse is calmer and more social and more easygoing. So he generally is like the more front facing. So if the advanced she, man, we're meeting a new client, she, she I'll send Jesse. Um, I can't, I can't because I, I feel like it's already like a, a two sided brain where I have to do creative work and I have to do this dry work that sometimes the social aspect is harder for me and I can do it and I like it, but I have to actually prepare for it. Like I like going to market because I get to be social at market and but sometimes if I have to do too many things in one day, I can't, I can't switch it back and forth quick enough. Um, do you think for an aspiring designer that like, what would you say to them regarding social stuff? Like for, for me, for like at least a decade, I went to nothing, did nothing, 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 nothing. And maybe that, that like then turned into having kids. So there was more nothing and then a whole bunch. Um, and now it just seems like, you know, second nature. Cause, cause it's like, we're all at decorator camp, whether we're at Kipps Bay or we're at market, we're all seeing each other and we're now all friends, whether you, we're trying to escape each other, I hope not, or not. Um, do you think it's something that people have to learn? I mean, the, um, I think that's, I feel like the social aspect of the business is, is definitely, um, it's alive and active. And I do, I feel like as far as the industry goes, it's one of pretty nice industry. It's re yes, I think it is a lot of really honest and, and good friendships within the industry. So mm -hmm. I always enjoy seeing you and everybody out and about at, at market at Kips Bay at, at dinners. And I miss that terribly. I feel like it's starting to come back online. Um, but I think there's, you know, there's the other social dance of just dealing with clients, potential clients, vendors, workrooms. I mean, I think, yes, there's a lot of, um, so much of the business is just about that sort of front and, facing. Yeah. Yes. It's bonding with your client, bonding with your vendors and mm -hmm. establishing these relationships that hopefully, and it, it's been true for us, but I feel like we have multi-generational clients because of it, because we've worked with the grandparents, the parents, you know, the grandkids now. So it's like, we're. Your family. Yeah. Look, I mean, it's like, yeah. <laughs> it got to you. Um, I, yeah, I was talking to my upholsterer a few months ago and he said it was very interesting when new, when, when there were new hires at design firms that many of the younger ones, when their, their first interaction with them was not adversarial, but it was very like, okay, I'm trying to show that I'm the boss or mm -hmm. that I have authority and that they way overstepped it. And instead of just being the friendly person that they ought to be. So it's so interesting, like no matter how much one tries to think about being business-like, being business-like comes down to just being human. Well, I think it's, it, especially with these trades and crafts that I, I feel are, you know, unfortunately kind of dwindling and, and these family businesses of upholsterers and gilders and, and workshops, workrooms would, you know, um, shops where that's a craft that they've studied their whole life and probably inherited from their parents. And I feel like we can learn so much from their history and knowledge. Totally. I, I never and they save our bacon all the time. All the time. You know, 
all the time. Um, so Mara, mm -hmm. I, I keep wanting to say Mara, Mara, Mara. I'm, I'm doing different versions as I, I go. I all of them. Okay. Um, when, so when you're doing the, the stuff that like the, the growing your business, um, you know, you've had, uh, you know, the, so wait, it's been 15 years. In the past 15 years, you've done like a huge amount of work work like yeah. what I consider our day job. Um, Cause that will always be the thing that pays the bills for, for decorators and designers. But you have also very steadily and very well developed a whole licensing program where you're designing really beautiful things and, and not just beautiful things that aren't out there. You know, it's not like you're just doing it to do it. It feels very purposeful as an outsider looking at it. Um, do you have a plan? Have you had a plan? Like, or was you know, it organic? It, you know, we've been shopping for so long uh, that we, before the internet, before Pinterest and Instagram, we had photos of things we'd seen at antique shops and uh, antique malls. And I mean, that's one of the, I feel like one of the benefits of us meeting in college and having this, you know, shared interest is that it really was our hobby, not just our business. So right. we've been in it a really long time in a deep way. My aunt is an antique dealer. It's just been around us for so long. And um, so we always had something we'd call prototypes, like things that we just thought were really beautiful or really interesting totally. that we didn't know what we were going to do with, but we had a folder. Yeah. And then it kind of became real as we were building a family, realizing like all our eggs are in one basket. This is us. We're you know, his parents are dairy farmers. My parents were school teachers. There's not a lot of generational wealth coming down the pike. So it was just the idea, like, we put all our eggs in one basket. How can we diversify and make oh, sure yeah. we can, like, pivot and move a little more fluidly, whichever way the wind blows? And we kind of just took it as, like, a practical, interesting, fun thing to do. And it, we didn't honestly realize that it's, a, it's like another business. We didn't. I'm just starting to understand, honestly, how much work we've taken on. And we're just starting to figure out how to staff differently in the office to kind of help with that. Because it, yes. you know, it did seem organic and it did seem like, oh, I, yes. do this, I do that and I do this. And all of a sudden I'm doing like 40 things. And you want to do them well. You don't want to like, you don't want one sucking. Them on weekends. Yeah. Um, what you said about, sorry, I'm sick and tired of sitting on my feet. Um, what you said about, your work also being your hobby. I feel the same way. Um, so it is, it's also just like a fun exercise whether or not you act upon it. As you gather the prototypes, as you isolate like, oh no, I think that's a really beautiful, important thing. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I like it. But then again, I read That's called article. inventory and I get in trouble all the time. Oh no, I don't mean buying. I don't buy <laughs> yeah, on spec. She doesn't mean I don't buying buy spec. Yeah. Um, that is scary. <laughs> yeah, take a picture. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. Um, so anyway, um, but I was just reading in like the Wall Street Journal, I think it was yesterday that, um, you know, if you, it, it, something like you should care less about your job to be happy. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> you know, like if it's your hobby and it's your, and it's your job job. Um, Somebody asked a question about being a married team as you go out and work with, with clients. Do you think, and, and I'm leading the witness here, do you think that being married gives you a, like a better way to talk to married couples? Did I lose you? Did you fall asleep? Did I force you into a coma of boredom? Guys, you still there? Hello? Hello, carriers. Guys, I'm going to wait for you. If you need to click off and click back on. You're frozen. Okay. Maybe I'm going to try to invite them again. See if that works. Sorry, guys, for the pause. It happens. Carrier and... Co, you guys there? All 
I know it's frozen, guys. I know, I know. Um, is it Mercury retrograde? Oh, no. Of course it is. I feel it. Okay, guys. I'm trying. I'm trying to invite them back in, but I think they're still hanging on because it won't bring up their name again. Carrier and company. No, no user available. Um, okay, good. Now they went off so I can ask them back on. This is all good. This is progress. Um, thank you for waiting. Thank you for being so generous with me as I figure this out. Okay, here we go again. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So, hey. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're back. So I had left you with, do you think married couples, do you think that you have a, a real advantage or that they, they know that you'll be able to speak to them better because you are also a couple? Do you know, I, I don't know if it's because we're married as much as I feel like one of the things we're, because we're partners, is we are not used to always getting our way. Like we have to internally mm -hmm. compromise all the time. So it's easy for us to kind of work with couples and figure out what are the right compromises there. Ne neither of us get to kind of dictate. Um, so you I'm, can... I'm I'm not sure it has anything to do with the fact that we're married, but I do feel like the fact that you get two partners who can meet with any client and sort of have two points of view. And, and sometimes, right. it, you know, we, we can hear both sides of the coin, especially if it is a family. And, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's more than just the couple, but sometimes they involve the children and it, it's sort of designed by committee almost. Mm -hmm. So I feel like yeah, yeah. It's, it's good Everybody's to have. Everybody's favorite everybody's favorite design by committee. But yes, I do feel like there's a little bit of um, comfort perhaps to a client knowing that there are four eyes on a project and mm -hmm. two brains and two, two different okay. approaches. So, yeah. And we were in one meeting with uh, a client who had their teenage daughter present and we were discussing something and Jesse and I like turned to each other and we're like, you know, battling it out. And I heard the mom turn to her daughter and say, they're married. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, like, don't worry about like, them. Don't worry about it. They'll be good. Um, yeah, but that, that is nice even to enact a dialogue between you two in front of them. So they can, they can hear that thought process as you toggle back and forth between various... Uh, it's very unfiltered here. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so, so let's talk about your style and your influences. Who or what gets you going? And has it changed over time? I'm sure it has. In in the world of design? Um, yeah, I mean, unless Elon Musk is like really <laughs> having an effect on how you run your business. Mm -hmm. um, who or what? I, I feel like we're pretty consistent. I do feel like we were really lucky in that we were able to mentor under designers that we really admired. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I started under Thomas O'Brien, and then I worked with Jeffrey Bill Huber for nearly 10 years. Um, Mara was Eichen Kliegerman, Sil Sunniford. So I feel like we had the, um, the, the luxury, really, of totally. having those great mentors. And I feel like that's really stuck with us. And, I think and those great. two mentors also have a lot of um, history of design baked into them. Right. You know, they're, they're all very grounded in in the <laughs> the line. I know I lost you on that one. You guys are like, yeah, we have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, like with Steven, yes, I, it was I like Giacometti. You love Giacometti. Yeah, like there are all these blast. influences that they were referencing that introduced us to, you know, the decorating greats and that it was yeah. being already kind of edited and transform for modern design. Yeah, it taught us how to build on kind of the history of design, I think. Um, what I mean, it's a, very, it's, a, it's a very good question because I, um, 
one of one of our new newest hires asked recently, well, what what do you do for fun? What do you do on like, what gets you going? And I really I, I didn't really have an answer because I feel like Tamara's earlier point, and I think it's still true. Like for fun on weekends, we will go antiquing. We will go to house museums. We will go to museums. Yeah. We will. It's all kind of we're so. I mean, I think we love what we do, and that immersed. Keeps, yeah. We're immersed and we love what we do. And I think that really is what activates us and keeps us going. And we love, I mean, who knew we would have loved High Point, North Carolina. We can't wait to go next week. Like, yeah. I've missed it. It's, you know, it's exciting. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's just what we, I don't know, it's just how we're programmed. So it's not an exciting answer. I mean, I, I wish I could say. No, no, I think it's, I think, uh, you know, my father would, and I've mentioned it before in these talks, like would constantly puzzle over the fact that people who worked for them, for him, would go on vacation and just like go to the beach and wouldn't, you know, like if they were in France, would just go to like Saint Tropez and not stop by and see a villa or a, you know, it would make him scratch his head. Like, what are you even doing here? Like, what are your <laughs> interests if not, you know, why would you go to France to sit on a beach? But you know, um, in the one thing I do think about is we, one of the best and smartest things we did early on was we bought a little house in Dutchess County mm -hmm. when we realized we weren't going to have control of our schedule and we weren't going to take any vacations and it was over. Our lives were basically <laughs> over. So we got a weekend house and that is like our, my little pause button where yeah. if I can have a day where we like, where I can wear sweatpants and take a hike and not like I basically recharge hike. with nature. Yeah, I like nature and quiet. And, um, and then I feel like if I didn't have that, if I took a vacation, it would have to, I would have to go to a beach and not look at anything. So I feel okay, like so I you, get those you little need, Yeah, you pauses. need a palate cleanse. Yeah, I need pauses. And now if I take a trip, I want to go like look and see beautiful things or do something kind of exciting because yeah. I have pauses. Um, did you live there during the, the full force of COVID? We yeah. did, yeah. It was great. Yeah. Good. Lucky you. We um, have high internet. Yeah, good. <laughs> good. Our, our internet was nothing but trouble the whole time. Uh, my kids missed so many classes, and we'd have to keep on sending emails saying, like, trying to send emails, <laughs> saying we're having trouble, you know, sending smoke signals, sending carrier pigeon. Um, what do your kids think of... Like, what's it like at home when you talk about design and travel? And like, is that dinner table talk? You know, it's funny. Um, it is. It, I mean, yes, I feel like that's all they hear in the car ride up and back from our house upstate. It's all they hear in the house. It's always work talk. And our son, who's 15, who's a typical teenager, who's just plugged in to his video games or whatever, will just say, you guys, it's just design. All you do is design. But if you happen to follow or game with him, you will notice he takes his Zoom backdrop very seriously and he has meticulously designed his room so that there's a, so it's not, it's not lost as much as they would like to it. Yeah. You know, as teenagers do dismiss what their parents do, but he, you know, there's, it's definitely there. And our, our 11 year old, she, she kind of gets it and she's very, I mean, she, you know, she can draw and plan, you know, <laughs> I remember yeah. picking her up from my parents. She had been visiting them and we drove in to pick them up and this is upstate. And she had this whole elaborate like development that she had drawn in chalk on their driveway, all in plan view with little toilets. I mean, you can see, <laughs> yeah, and she yeah, was yeah. maybe like five at the time, but like two scale, a whole development, houses, bedroom, like, you know, this is the refrigerator, kitchen, stove. It was like, wow, they don't fall far from the tree. Yeah. I my would- has helped. Say what? I think Minecraft has helped create a lot of designers. Oh, I have not played Minecraft, so I don't understand they build, the... They build houses. Have your children, though. Yeah. They um, did. I'm they, sure they did. They play FIFA. Hmm. Minecraft yeah. would have been when they were like six, eight. They did it. They, they, they did just it. got their phones uh, as 13-year-olds. The what? school broke, broke it because they... Um, <laughs> They gave them iPads, so tomato, tomato. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean to represent virtue at all. There is no <laughs> she knew. Um, but I did use to tell my kids, instead of to count sheep when they couldn't go to sleep, I would say, 
imagine the house, you, you know, your favorite house, like well, how many rooms will they have? Will it have a bedroom for your father and me? Will you have, you know, an indoor swimming pool? Of course, my boys were like, oh, we'll have soccer fields. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was more meaningful than sheep counting. Um, though my kids only want modern right now. Mm -hmm. All they care about is modern. Are you having that? Do you have that at all at your house? Yeah, I mean, we do get a little pushback for anything that's old. You know, it's like, mm, we just have all that old furniture, Dad. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's even more sad. Like, Natalie doesn't know she could pick things. Like, she's so used to Jesse right. quickly, like, buying and updating her wardrobe or <laughs> her room that she doesn't realize other she things has agency. pick out their bedding or... Yeah. yeah, we're never going to let her know she that. Hasn't I'm, out not, yet. I'm not sure I'm an advocate for that either. I say we take control. Totally, I mean, 100%. I just think he's going to be very disappointed, <laughs> you know, like when she rebels. doesn't know how to get dressed or shop. When the midriff shirts start popping out. And that's, <laughs> yeah. Boy. Um, what do you guys want to do in the next few years that you haven't done yet? In the next few years that we haven't done yet, well, I can tell well, you that you have done and you want to do more of. That's okay. Um, I would like to travel a bit more. I feel like we have mm -hmm. definitely been grounded between starting a business, raising a family, launching lines. Um, we have uh, friends from FIT who went back to Denmark and Germany who have been inviting us to their homes for years yeah. and and we've said next year maybe next year maybe next year and it's sort of become this running joke so it is on our sort of short-term bucket list to actually make good Start on those promises and, yeah and we did actually before covid we finally did go get the kids passports so we were ready to do it and then mm -hmm. um grounded again but we're ready to, that's really what we're looking for have this. you been to either of those places Ever? Uh, we have not been to Berlin. We've not been to Copenhagen, no. I am, I've not been to Copenhagen, so I cannot speak to it. But the idea of you guys walking down under the Linton and seeing all the shinkle, house, uh, shinkle buildings, like, I want to go with you, just so I can hear what you have to say <laughs> about it all. I've, I've only been once, so I do, I'm, I'm due for, for a review and, and more. Well. Let us know yeah. your dates. We can make it yeah, a, group, totally. a group effort. But what, do, no, when I say, what are you, what do you really want to do? And that can include travel, but professionally, where professionally. is there, is there something that you're dreaming of doing they haven't done yet? Professionally. I don't know. I, I mean, I think one, one thing we both are interested in would be, um, designing hotel, designing Me sort too, of more right? spaces. I feel like we've got the residential thing down pretty pretty good. I would And you did the, the Vogue offices, so there's we've done, that yeah, we've, kind we've of done public. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think having some more sort of public domain that we could uh, put our mark on would be amazing. So I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, I think you should. Um, somebody's asking, with the new project, do you create a, a collage board of styles to steer a project to a finished look, or is it organic? We do. I mean, it's organic in that, uh, well, not organic, it's collaborative, really. I feel like we often will start with our clients. I feel like we have a process. Sharing their imagery, their, yeah. their, their looks, and then we'll sort of counter with, with ours, and we'll put together a, a, a board, basically, which... If I were to turn the camera around, you could see one live. Um, but you won't, or you will? Sure. I mean, this is what we, you know, this is sort of our little charade right. here, which has a mixture of inspiration and existing. Yeah. But yes, um, that, I guess it's a long-winded answer to the question. No, yeah, I think, no, 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 that's good. And I think part of it is the clients might have architectural details or color or or we get a hint of what their style is and then they're mm -hmm. coming to us to figure out how to make that make sense in the layout of their home and the architecture of their home and the location of their home so we'll kind of decipher what we're seeing or what we think we're seeing in their imagery and then we do create like a storyboard of what we think formal spaces versus private spaces 
you know. So I think it's important also just to establish and get on the same page with the homeowners in terms of what that look and inspiration is and, and keeping that intact through the course of a project that might be 18 months, 24 months. So that you come back and use it as a touchstone in case- Just to make sure we haven't strayed from the original right. agenda. Uh, unless they've decided, no, no, now I want to stray. Right. Um, but it sounds like it starts with the furniture plan. Always. Yeah, okay, yeah, me too. It, it, there's gotta be that. So to that question, when I think of a collage board, I feel like a collage makes me think of a much less structured presentation. We have a um, structured presentation. Yeah, yeah, I get, I, I, yeah, I, I've never done like just a collage that would feel, um, I'd feel silly doing it. And I'm not sure why I feel that way. That That's for a shrink to figure out. Um, do you guys ever have to seed to one or another's like before you go into a meeting and you each have your push and pull on where you think it should go. Do sometimes you, you know that one of you is more plugged in to the project than the other? Never. What? <laughs> <laughs> I got all, all I needed to from the lady next to you. Um, that must be really interesting just to see who feels it more I mean, the understanding that you both are feeling it completely, but that one of you might be sort of intuiting something. No, we had an interview a long time ago where an architect was sitting with a client and interviewing us. And um, they said, okay, if there's two of you, who's thing one and thing two? Mm -hmm. And it really does depend on sometimes just the location of a job. If like Jesse drives a lot faster than I do, so he tends to take the job, the lead on jobs that are um, outside of the city. Uh -huh. uh, and I also, unfortunately, think there's something to be said where, um, as a man working with contractors outside of the city, it tends to make it a smoother process. I don't know. Which is unfortunate, but probably true. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah, it will remain up there. in the air. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that our our rule of thumb in terms of uh, settling disputes is that whomever feels the most passionate about whatever the wins. of you is wins. Uh -huh. That's we my husband's and my philosophy at home. Like if he has some sort of crazy strong opinion about the kids taking this class, fine, go yeah. for it. And so okay. I guess that, to your point, you know, is it intuitive? I don't know. But if yes, whoever feels the most about it just automatically wins and the other one yeah. moves on. Um, does that does that philosophy extend to the client? Except like if where? you have to the client. So if the homeowner has an opinion that's super, super strong. Well, how, how do you deal with that when there's a strong opinion that you disagree with? You know, I feel like we are, we have no qualms about pushing back. And I think oftentimes clients will ask that we do give pushback, whether oh, maybe not sure. with them, but certainly if we're collaborating with an architect, landscape design, mm -hmm. they, they like to have a little bit of tension, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes just to make sure that nobody's just checked out and checking off all the boxes. But um, yes, we will mm -hmm. certainly push back if we feel it's a really bad decision, but we will say, you know, I think you should do this. Ultimately, it's your home at the end of the day. We're not going to live there if that's right. really what you feel is important to you. Yeah. By all means, have it. Right. But, and I also feel like there's but, so much fluidity in design that I get less hung up on it. Like, it's yeah, like there's not one answer. Yeah, it might be disappointing because we could see the, you know, a different path, a different path or more potential. But then I could feel like it's easy just to pivot again and, and figure out how to make yeah. And you know what? There's always Photoshop. So in the end. <laughs> but I agree with you that like, I like to pivot, but I sometimes I'm concerned. Does the homeowner think that that means I'm like, don't give a damn, which of course I do, but I do think that there's more than one answer. And when, when we're debating something that I feel really strongly about, then they'll see, you know, that hard stop. But it, it's an interesting you know, as purveyors of and as ambassadors through the process, 
it is it is maybe one of the most interesting things about our job, how to lead people through it safely. And I just had a, yes. a, a conversation with a client where we were working out plans and modifications of plans. And um, it's a Blake house and there's going to be a lot of mess and fuss that takes place, uh, you know, in the mudroom. And I was advocating for a washer dryer so that all the towels, all the stuff can just not have to make it up into the house. It just kind of will yeah. happen. And her concern was that her husband will disrobe right then and there and walk naked through the house, which is true. I have. <laughs> On the plan, everything makes sense. But yeah. if her husband's actually good. And I was like, what if we have robe hooks? What if there's robes? He's just not going to do it. No. I'm losing you. I'm losing your audio. because I he, he I won't know who's hanging out on the front there. porch and he'll just wander. You've lost yeah. us again? I No, you're back. I lost your oh. audio for a minute there, but I felt that it was about your client who was going to embrace nudity, period, <laughs> unless he got what he needed, which is is totally, that's a good way to deal with it. <laughs> that's when you acquiesce for sure. Um, when do you know when a project's finished? When do we know when the project is finished? I feel like once um, the art hangers have done their final tour and the walls are dressed and the punch list is complete and the last accessories are in place, yeah. I feel like the project is complete. Although that being said, I do feel like the door is always open and I do feel right. like there's generally, unless we've done an awful job and the client never wants to call back, there's generally a refresh button or a child yeah. has sort of grown out of yeah. whatever room and now they need something like there's, I feel like, yeah, if is the it ever really done? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually the answer I wanted to hear. <laughs> like that it's not really done. It's not really, yes. Um, if, you, if you've got those relationships in place. Um, what is the farthest afield you have gone for work? The farthest afield we have gone, um, I mean, I would have to say the Vogue Paris office was probably the furthest oh. job. Um, and Tell me. domestically, wasn't that exciting. Mm -hmm. But domestically, I mean, the furthest afield, I think San Francisco, LA. Seattle. Yeah, that's yeah. far. That's far. I, feel like um, I had the pleasure of working in St. Bart's in Montana in a in prior offices that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun and I wouldn't mind it again so you don't yeah I don't mind long distance jobs because they just have a different a different set of requirements mm -hmm. uh, my you know they don't call you when the finial falls off the lamp right but um but yeah it's it can feed you creative creatively as forgetting how to speak English there for a minute. I apologize. Um, what about more licensing? What, what aspects of product would you like to, to um, get into that you haven't done already? Um, what would we like to get into? Because let's like... review for everybody. You have furniture at Century. Yes. You have fabrics at Lee Jofa. You Good have... Where are your, where are your you notes? You have rugs at... <laughs> L Loy, is that how you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have lighting at Visual Comfort. That's yes. right. So what's next? You tell us. Where should we? I feel like you're the you're the queen bee. Let's let's. Uh, where would you go? Um, I think like you know, what are you in the mood to do? I have unsuccessfully been trying to do um, tabletop for a long time now because I just think I'd really have fun doing it. But like, what what do you think would be fun? I don't know. This is you our know, tabletop. We have paper, these really classy paper right. COVID, <laughs> COVID has, has made everything disposable. But, um, you know, I, I kind of feel like our, not that our plate is full, we're just, we're kind of hitting a stride with the licensing teams that we have. Where oh, and I don't, I don't mean like you're empty and you need it. No. I'm, I just mean, you know, 
what I think what about. What tickles your imagination, yeah. Probably accessories. Yeah, I think there's a real dearth in our, in our industry. I think that's a very important thing. Um, I have some ideas about that. Perhaps we should all talk. Let's talk. Um, I think, yeah, I think the more the merrier on that, in that particular category. Yeah. Because we need, we need them all so desperately. I mean, how many bowls can we buy? You know, and here's a bowl, and here's a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you, do you have a collection? I mean, what do you collect? I, uh, you pictures. know, Jesse collects pictures. I, I have a pension for um, ceramics. And I think that may have come from uh, my many Dairy. years. Well, I hadn't thought about that, but actually I think it's, it's all the Clary's Cliff pottery collection that Anna has that sort of inspired my love for all this old, weird, funky pottery. Yeah. And so wherever there's a surface, there is a clutter of pottery. Um, so if you need some bowls or accessories, <laughs> just hit us up. I know where to go. <laughs> have you read The Hair with the Amber Eyes? Have I, have I heard what? Read The Hair with the Amber Eyes. No. Oh. I don't read. Okay. Well, I'm going <laughs> to... You say that? I mean, even when you feel it, you're not supposed to say it. Um, Mara, what do you collect? Um, what do I collect? Honestly, what do I collect? I collect... Dust. I like, <laughs> I collect. Yeah, I like self-help books. And oh, she has no. a collection. I have, like, crystals. She has a collection and... of cats and dogs from oh, yeah. the ASPCA. I like... I like mutts and pets. You mean actual breathing pets? Well, it's he's it's a, he's a, I only have two cats and a dog. It's not it's not that's great not great. Oh, that's nice. Sure. That's that's a three is a few. Um, yeah. Okay. Lucky you guys that you don't have allergies. Do, are you at peace with what animals do to the decorating? It's very depressing. It's super depressing. Well, or it's, it's, or in some cases, it's great because I feel like those... It's good for business. It's, it's bad great for, for business. Home. I can't tell you how many rugs and sofas we've had to replace <laughs> and recover because of somebody loves cats or yeah. somebody has an old dog that they just can't get rid of. So it's just easy <gasps> to replace the rug every year because... Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. So, yeah. It's not a bad thing. For the <laughs> yeah, rug business, they... for, our, for our rug launch, it'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when when we start having accidents, let's hope that people are as kind with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. All right. Well, it's been so great talking to you. Me I too. love seeing you guys wherever we go. And I've been using your your visual comfort already. I mean, from the minute it arrived on the scene. And um, I'm so excited about those rugs. I just love everything you're up to. Oh, well, thank I, you. I, I, I have your, to say... I, I mean, we have your flush mount in Natalie's room. And when she saw her room, she said, oh, that is so beautiful. <laughs> Which one is it? It's the one that has it's the brass sort of the kind starburst, of Moroccan... beautiful. Um, maybe it's the Baltazar. Yes. I think yes, it's the Baltazar. Yes, yes, yes. OK, I have that in my bathroom, and I love it. Um, all right, well, that makes me feel even more connected to you. <laughs> Um, and we do have to get our kids to meet each other at some point so they can uh, trade, trade them. Actually, what I did with my sons this past summer is I had them deliver stuff with um, the gentleman who does a lot of our deliveries. And I think we should get your son involved. And they each trade days because when you're finished with it, like I was walking down the street, Marcos, my son was like, oh, right over there, they make great uh, lampshades. I mean, he knew all of it. He was like, oh, yeah, I was at KRB last week. And blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, so we've got to get your kids into that, into that cycle. I would love yeah. that. And I think, yes, I think we're overdue for game night, for family game night. So yeah. let's get back on with that. Yeah. What, do you guys have family game night? No, but I think we, we talked about it years I ago would, that we yeah, were going we to do family to do game that. night. And... Okay. Well, we've been a little late, but we can We're a little that. late, but we we'll <laughs> A little late. Yeah, my kids don't talk to me. No. Uh, they'll talk to you, though. All right. Thank you guys so thank much. You. Really wonderful. Love thank you so you. much. Love okay. kisses and speak to you soon. See you, see you in Half Point. Yes. See you next week. Bye. Bye.